Stations Incorporated. You're watching Buzz with Jess Luhan. Good evening, Guam. Well, I'm Jess Luhan. Welcome to this edition of The Buzz. I got a change in, in uh, my guest this evening. Uh, Senator uh, Aline Yamashita was supposed to be my guest to talk about charter schools and the laws pertaining to charter schools, but uh, as we are on live. We, we understand that the legislature just voted uh, and passed the bill. I don't know what the, uh, the makeup of, of how many votes uh, it took to pass this bill called into session by the, uh, by the governor. But she was supposed to be in here tonight, so we pushed her back because she wasn't able to make it. But I'm glad that good friend, former Senator Marilyn Manabuso, and I called her in the last minute and I said, you know, because I had her set up for two weeks from now to continue talking about, okay, what happened back in the last plebiscite. And tonight we're going to be concentrating on not only that, but the Constitution that was proposed back there in uh, 1979, right? Mm -hmm. There we go. Yes. But uh, welcome again and thank you. <laughs> thank, thank you. you. <laughs> thank <laughs> you. For, for taking your time out of a busy schedule. And, and I, I, I told you that you, you only had one option in coming in. And there wasn't a no, there it was, was a yes. <laughs> yes, yeah, there was no option quite out. That, that's, that's right, there, <laughs> yes. there we go. But, but thank you very much. Mm -hmm. so, the last you were here, we, we talked about the process of the uh, back then and how we came about with the with with the vote in, in the at that uh, dominated basically the the, uh, the Commonwealth dominated that vote over the over the statehood when it came down to the to the runoff. Okay, but what led up to that uh, is what we're going to talk about is that a constitution was proposed for Guam. Um, from the, I guess, was agreed upon by President Carter at the time, mm -hmm. and the Congress ag mm -hmm. agreed uh, to that. So please, tell us the, the genesis, the beginning of this whole thing. You know, the 94th Congress mm -hmm. of the United States uh, passed a bill that said uh, Guam and the Virgin Islands, you have the authority to write your constitution, and it also set some parameters. Uh, one of that is to, you know, have a Republican form of government and three branches of government and, and the Bill of Rights. And so then the local legislature um, it so you enacted... So you can do it as long as you do it this way? Yes, okay. yes. And then the, then the local legislature enacted uh, a, a law mm -hmm. that uh, sets up the Constitutional Convention okay. where you, you know, have uh, former Governor Carl Gutierrez who is a the chairman of the Constant Convention, and there were a lot of very well um, educated and dedicated uh, public servants who sat on the mm -hmm. Constitutional Convention. Mm -hmm. It was a good document. Sure, really and, and you know, I, again, I, I've read about it, and of course, uh, if we had access to, to the social media and what we have today, you know, we can, Correct. you can read about that and what's going on here in Guam pretty much as, as it happens. Mm -hmm. um, but, but I was quite a this few, uh, you know, thousand miles away and having to read, you know, papers uh, a couple of weeks later. So wasn't here for, for the, you know, boots on the ground yes. uh, movement that, right. that you guys had back then. It was aggressively sought uh, after. Uh, again, the Constitution, I mean, one will say, well, that's great. And I, I, in some, in some um, pockets, uh, community, or pockets here in Guam, some of them say, still continue with getting some sort of Constitution mm -hmm. for us. Mm -hmm. um, you're you're <coughs> saying that the Congress, not only Congress, but the President of the United States, Jimmy Carter at the time, said, hey, look, you can have, we approve that you, you should get a Constitution, but this is how you're, you're going to do it. This is the guidelines you're going to do it. So basically that says, it, to me, is that kind of like, uh, like an organic act on steroids? <laughs> I don't know if it was on steroids, but an enhanced um, organic act, then. <laughs> okay. Yeah, an enhanced organic act. Okay. It's nothing but a federal legislation, okay. and I think that uh, it's a good document in mm -hmm. essence. It, the main premise that it was defeated mm -hmm. was that um, the question on why are we going to have someone dictate the parameters of something so fundamental as a, a people, you know, mm -hmm. of a particular government to write their own constitution mm -hmm. and that we did not need external influence to sure, write our sure, own, sure. yeah, our own constitution. And, and that was one premise. And, and most, uh, in, uh, either you're an in, in independent uh, nation or even states at this point, the states write their own constitution. Mm -hmm. Of course, to be, a, to be admitted in the union, all all other states ha have to ratify that that movement, but to write the state constitution, um, the federal government 
the you know the Congress doesn't have to approve. Right. It's it's your residents from that state that approves that. Now here here's the situation where they're going to give you a constitution, but you're not quite a state, so we can't treat you as a state. And if you write the constitution, if the, if the Guam Constitution says, well, you can vote president, uh, or you have members of Congress, uh, you'll take it to Congress. Says, no, you're not a state, so you're not eligible for for those rights. Uh, that that a state has, yes. so you you can have it as long as it's limited to to this. So might as well have them write it for us, right? Yes. Well, <laughs> you know, like I said earlier, um, there is a lot of debate, and here again is the uh, grassroots movement, mm -hmm. the, the Parapada. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the Para was uh, a network uh, that was formed by uh, Dr. Underwood, mm. Robert Underwood, and the Pada was was my grassroots mm. organization. And we thought that um, a, con a constitution was just premature at that time. It was also debated that the constitution was nothing else other than an improved organic act because it was a federal piece of le federal legislation and that even if we had this constitution, it could have been easily amended by members of Congress. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, but the one profound issue um, that came out of the uh, five to one vote on the against the, the oh, ratification. Oh, so it's it, it five to one in the, in the vote. Yes, mm. yes. It was against, five to against, one, yeah. against, yes. The constitution. And the question yeah. is, you know, in August of 1979, was do you approve the proposed constitution for the territory of Guam? Mm -hmm. And during the educational campaign of the Parapada, which mm -hmm. is a grassroots movement, was doing is this premature? Do we need to identify? Uh, our relationship with our mother country, the United States, mm -hmm. and then when we define that relationship, then we can reduce that into a document, mm -hmm. codify it, mm -hmm. and then call it our constitution. And so it was more of a precursor for political status. Sure, yes, sure, yes. sure. But but in essence, with that as well, and that and that in in essence, of course, we talked about this, and I, I'm also. Um, it, it, in opposition of having a constitution mm -hmm. prior to determining your 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 political destiny, basically, because as you as you said, there are there were parameters in which you can write a constitution. So if there are parameters, oh, you're having to check all the time to make sure that by the time it gets to Congress, it, it'll it'll pass. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it would meet pass muster, basically. You know, so well then then. Then do it yourselves. Yes. Yeah, and you have that document in the Organic Act <laughs> to, to do that. Yeah. Yeah. And there's also an argument that you know, if you write a constitution, do you basically uh, does the people of Guam ratify their unincorporated territory, and would the constitution sort of um, say and dictate mm -hmm. uh, nationally to mm -hmm. to uh, Congress that? Uh, we remain an unincorporated territory mm -hmm. because we govern ourselves under that present relationship. Mm -hmm. So a federal territorial relationship was in essence um, something that, that, that most of the leaders mm -hmm. felt that we should address first before writing our constitution. So there, that was there. right mm -hmm. in August 4, 1979. It was, it was overwhelming, yeah. And I tell you what, we'll talk more about this and uh, we'll ask the, the, um, the viewers tonight um, if they remember back in your memory, if you remember, what else was on that ballot at that time when they voted for the, the Constitution? What else brought out the vote? Do you remember? Be right back. <laughs> 